Okay, so in Boomtown, you're going to, to get to the seller lead, let's go back to that. You're gonna click on this menu over here when you log in and it's gonna populate everything out on the side and then you click on seller leads and it pulls all these up. <clears throat> so the script is a little bit different. The only thing that changes on the this script compared to the one when the people provide us their information is really just the introduction. So if you go down and you find somebody like this person. So if somebody answers the phone and it's I have that first number. I'm gonna if it's a male, I'm gonna say Mr. Patel, but it's probably Patel, right? So I'll say Mr. Patel. If it's a female, I'll say Mrs. Patel. Um, and then I'm gonna say, Hey, this is Tierney. I'm here with the Seller Resource Center, and you requested your property valuation on our website, and we've prepared a free market analysis for you but we didn't have an email to send it to, what's the best email to send it? So our first deal is to get their email address. So I'll say that again. Hi. So one, we just want to get their email. So we have a complete lead. And so right now we don't know their name and we don't know their email address, but we have their address. So once we confirm, when they say, oh, okay, yeah, here's my email. That's letting me know that this is their house and they're giving me their email address. So I'll go in and put like, it might be Karina Patel, might be the K Patel. You know, they just found that K to tell somewhere else. So look at the three and you can um, see. So, hey, um, Mrs. Tatel or Patel, I would say. And like I said, it might be Karina. So I might say, hey, Karina, if it's a female that answers, this is Tierney. I'm here in the Seller Resource Center, and you requested your property value for 9408 Lake Court. See, this is the address right at the top in Irving. And we prepared a free market analysis for you, but didn't have an email to send it to. What's the best email for you? So you're not acting like scared to get the information or you shouldn't be calling to get their information none of that like you're acting like I'm supposed to be calling you to get your email address so they might have an objection and say who who are you what company are you with how did you get my information you don't want to spend a whole bunch of time getting derailed by oh yeah you remember our website now you can explain you don't want to avoid things either so oh yeah no um, you know, this is Tierney. I'm a realtor, you know, and you went on our website, Texas Online Home Value. That's our seller website, Texas Online Home Value. You went on our website, Texas Online Home Value. And we just, we prepared a free market analysis for you so you can see what the houses around you are selling for. What's the best email to send it to? So I don't want to get derailed by who are we, what company are we with, how do we get their information? It's, I'm going back to the email, right? So normally though, they'll send, they'll give you the email. Um, and then you want to go into the structure of a call for the seller. So the most important things that we need to find out from a seller is I like to ask, there's two ways you can go initially. You can ask the magic wand question, and that's what Adam's really big on, magic wand. Like, if you, so if you had a magic wand, when would you want to sell that property? So that's kind of light, you know. I like to go a different approach. I like to go with, so how long have you owned that property for? Because I feel like I can give them information and then turn around and ask them a question. So if they, if they tell me they bought their house, um before 2008 then I'm gonna say oh so you saw the market crash because the market crashed around 2008 right so my response is gonna be oh so you saw the market crash and come back to life did you realize that we are in the best market that we've seen in the last 30 years you know so I'm gonna see what they say and if they're like oh yeah that's we heard that okay 
So if the numbers made sense and you were able to make a significant profit, would you think about putting your house on the market and selling it? So that's the direction I like to go. But you can go either way because both seem to work, right? If they tell me they bought it after 2008, so between 2008 and basically 2012, that's when we had a buyer's market. We were at a very low point. It was almost a depression, really, you know? So I'm going to say, oh, my gosh. I don't know if you know, but you bought at the lowest point in our market, and now we're at the highest point we've seen in the last 30 years. So let me ask you something. If you were able to make a significant profit, would you consider putting your house on the market? Then the last thing is if they bought between 2013 and today, what I'm going to say is, oh, my gosh. So just so you know, we've seen a 10 to 15 percent increase each year since you bought the house. And let me ask you something, if you were able to make a significant profit, so I'm going back to that same thing every time, but I'm just depositing different value. And I'm I'm letting them know, one, I'm a professional because I'm, I know what went on in the real estate market when you bought the house, right? And I'm telling you what's going on right now, and I'm just giving you an opportunity um, to sell if it makes sense for you. So you can go with the magic wand or you can go with that question. Um, and then they might say, oh, no, um, we're, we, we're not thinking of that right now. Okay, so you know what? Tell me a little bit about the house because we prepared this free market analysis for you, but I could do a more specific one based on any updates you've done. So now you get them to start talking about the current condition of the property. So you're asking them things like, how many bedrooms do you have? How many bathrooms? They'll be like, don't you have that information already? Yeah, we do, but sometimes it's not accurate. Like, And you guys know that. Sometimes what's in the tax roll is not accurate information. So, yeah. We just want to make sure that we have the most up-to-date, accurate information. So, so, And your whole goal is to kind of build rapport, get them to talk, and get them to share about their house with that. So you're going to go into bedrooms, bathrooms, confirm square footage. Um, usually the gear bill is accurate, so I don't ask that question. But I want to know the condition and any updates. So what type of flooring do you have? Have you updated the AC? Have you changed out the roof? Um, just different things that are going to add value. Um, and then I'm going to ask, how much do you guys owe? Because, and if they're like, well, I don't want to give you that information, I would say, you know what, I can send you over a seller's net sheet. Just so when you look at this market activity, if you're like, oh my gosh, this is something I might consider, you'll at least know what it would take to sell it, you know, and how much it would cost you to sell it. So you'll know your net. So I asked them how much they owe. I asked them how long they've been in the property. Um, I also get details about the property. Um, and then I'm going to say at the end, um, if, if the numbers end up making sense and we decide to meet and we come out and you fall in love with our marketing, um, are you ready to move forward and get your house on the market? So that, that's kind of the structure of a call for a seller. Those are the things that I'm focused on. Um, your best objection handler, no matter what, in my opinion, with a seller, is how long have you been in your property? Because then, like I said, you can deposit that value. Because if somebody told me I'm at the highest point that I, we've been in in 30 years and I own a home, I might just want to see what that looks like, you know? Yep. Anybody have any questions about the seller structure of a call? I do. I do. Right. That's just that's just a way to keep get them talking. Because most people are going to answer that question. Oh, I've been here 10 years or I bought in this. And then that gives you an opportunity. We're not saying we don't know, but it's just creating dialogue. So that gives you an opportunity to share. Like I said, you're going to establish yourself as a professional by sharing the market with them. So I do, I go into Netris and I pull up their property. 
I'm the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna see what's around there. So if there's no other houses on the market, I'm gonna bring that up. Like, you know what? We're starting to see the market shift in different areas, but yours only has doesn't have any houses similar to yours that are available. So that would be something you can throw out to somebody. And that is a, a scenario like that will allow us to get you over market value. Seriously, because it inventory, when inventory is low, demand and price go up, you know, so saying things like that, just so you know, when inventory is low, demand and price go up. When you start talking like that, using that language, they're like, this person's a professional, you know, um, so I would definitely pull it up. Any other questions you guys can think of? Okay, so our process for listing and you should probably take notes for us so we can be documenting this pro these this process so our new listing process because a lot of people get confused as you can see we're updating showing instructions but that should have been included um so once you go on the appointment right we have our listing presentation and we that listing presentation is in the tier um, and I'm going to go through it with you guys. Oh. <laughs> Where is my listing presentation? I think it's in tier three. Yeah, oh, yeah. Tier three. All right, so it's in tier three. Let me recast. You will once you get past the training. All right, so when I sit down with somebody, um, the first thing I do when I walk in the house is I'm gonna tour the property and I'm gonna establish that I am the, I'm the authority when I get in there. You know, not like cop or whatever, but it's like, listen to me, I know what I'm doing, I'm the professional. So confidence is key. You can't show any sign of the non-confidence. When you walk in with somebody, you have to be confident. So when I go in, I'm looking for a place where we can sit and I can present. So it might be a kitchen table. It might be a dining room table, you know. Um, so I'm going to say, I'll say, okay, um, I'm going to put my stuff down over here. And why don't you give me a tour? So I'm telling them what I'm going to do and what to do. So it's just kind of establishing how things are going to go, right? So they'll walk me around the property and I'm looking, I, I'm not too, too vocal with that. I'm just observing. Um, now I'm not going to just be real quiet to make them uncomfortable, but I might be like, okay, you know, like stuff like that, but I'm not going to be like, oh, this is beautiful or anything like that. Or, oh, you know, I'm not making any of those sounds, but I'm making mental notes of one, something that's really positive about the house and two, any repairs that I see, like for deferred maintenance, or if I see something that might be, might have been a leak, like say I see where there's a different type of texture on the ceiling, like there's not discoloration, but I see there, like they fixed, they did a repair. I'm going to say, oh, did you guys have a leak? Because it's just making them think like, oh, dang, they know what they're doing. So walk the property and then we come back and sit down and say, hey, this is how we do it. You know, I really um, we want to make sure that you understand what we do in terms of marketing and see if you want to hire us. Um, and we'll talk about all of that. Um, I'm recording already on here. Not just my I guess you could do it on there. But I'm going to get my voice. So um, I'll let them 
know that I, I'm not going to sit down and just give you price and commission. This isn't what this is all about. Right now, we're going to figure out if you want to hire us based on the marketing that I'm going to show you that we do. So we, we just want to make sure you understand the marketing that we do because we don't just stick a sign in the yard and put in the MLS. We actually make sure that we get your house in front of every buyer who's interested, you know. So I'm going to show you that and then we'll go from there. And they'll be like, okay. So I pull up the listing presentation. Um, we're the Tierney Jordan Network and we've been in business since 1998. Um, Tierney is actually an investor from 1998 to 2006 and got her real estate license in 2006. We are on track to close 350 homes this year. That number's a little bit off as you guys saw from it, but you can still say that because it's not over. Um, we did close over 200 homes last year and we have a team of agents that live throughout the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. And basically for us is we have two jobs. So one, we want to make sure, and we are going to make sure that we get your house in front of everybody who's interested. Um, and we also want to make sure that this process is smooth for you. So we know that showing your house and putting your house on the market can be stressful, but we will make sure that we communicate with you. That's the biggest thing. And that's something that people appreciate. I'll tell you guys that knowing that you're going to keep them up to date and, and communicate with what's going on is very important to them. So we, we're going to make sure we get your house in front of everybody who's interested. And we're also going to make sure this is a smooth process for you guys. And you probably already know, but this just shows you where buyers start their search. As they're looking for a property, this is where they search. And you guys probably already know it's the internet. This breaks it down even further, and it shows you the house that people actually bought where they found it. So 43% of buyers found the house that they bought on the internet, 33% from a real estate agent, um, yard signs and open house signs make up of 9%. And then basically from the yard sign, open house sign on, those are things that we don't control. So any realtor that you get, um, you want to make sure that they have a strong internet marketing plan. I'm going to show you what we do with that. And we're also going to make sure the real estate community knows about your property. We don't double dip, so you guys know. I'm not going to represent you and the buyer on your house. Now, that doesn't mean somebody on our team won't, and I don't say that. But it's really a conflict um, because we can't really get you the most. So we are going to mar market to other realtors um, and we won't be the one like showing the property or you can say, I won't be the one showing the property. So this is what I'm going to show you exactly what we do to get your house in front of the buyers on the internet and other real estate agents. So one thing that's huge for us is reverse prospecting. And what I do, you guys, let me grab my sheet. with me. Um, this is a reverse prospect list that I've done in the past. So I pull this out and I show them. Um, we reverse prospect. So we're looking for um, all the realtors who set up an automatic email for a property. I'm already recording it. I am. You can record me talking if you want, but I'm already recording it on here. So. So, just so they can see the paper and hold notes too. So what we do is anytime a realtor is working with a buyer, um, they're going to set up an automatic email so that they don't have to manually email properties to their clients, right? So this is a list of all the realtors for one of my properties who emailed their client one of my properties. The problem is Sometimes those clients miss the emails and most of the time the realtor is waiting for the client to call them so they might not know about the property that hit the market. 
And we've oh, sold wow. homes. This is serious. Like we've sold homes just through reverse prospecting. Like we had a house in Preston Hollow and you guys can make this part of your story because this is the truth. We had a listing in Preston Hollow um, that can't, it was on the market for about a week and we, cause everybody doesn't answer their phone. So we go through and we actually text and leave a message um, along with an email to these realtors. So we texted another agent he actually had a buyer, but his client that was on here, his client didn't get the email because he was traveling and the agent didn't know about the property. So my call, my text was what caused us to sell that property. And I get, I'll get people who are like, they don't even know about it. So the ones that are highlighted are actually the people that had somebody. And this is a different property that I had. So there's a good amount you know people so you're going to reverse prospect on your properties um we put a home warranty so i'll say do you guys have a home warranty in place and most of them say no and i say we put a home warranty while we have the property listed so if something comes up it's free of charge but if something comes up you'll just be responsible for the service fee which is like 75 dollars um i need to update this because we have more than a thousand agents here now but we do in-house marketing to all of the local um, exp agents um, we also going to put the property in mls so that's going to hit every realtor in north texas and then i don't know if you know but one out of every eight buyers in the state of texas is an international buyer so we do global marketing as well to make sure we're exposing your property to the international buyers and then we have a database. Um, currently, we have over 34,000 active buyers that are looking for a property. So we're going to blast your property to our database as well. And then remember what I said in terms of making sure you have a real estate professional that is marketing your property online. We have our own um, marketing company, and we push our properties out to over 800 websites. And we're refreshing that information every 48 hours. Um, some of the sites that we syndicate to are YouTube. And you might say YouTube for real estate, yes. I don't know if you know, but YouTube is the number two search engine. Um, so we do video. We're going to do a video on your property and professional photography. We'll have your property featured on YouTube. Facebook is huge. Um, and yes, for real estate, everybody's on Facebook. Google Plus is one of Google's companies that we market on, and Google is the number one search engine, in case you didn't know. We're also going to push it out on all the different social media sites, so Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Foursquare. We also pay a little bit extra for the enhanced version of Realtor.com, because with that, we can put 36 photos opposed to just one. These are some of the sites that we syndicate to. And like I said, we refresh it every 48 hours. This is a screenshot of our backend system. And at the time, we had 32,234 active people looking for properties. Currently, like I said, we have 34,000. So we're going to send a blast out to all of them. Like I mentioned, we do professional photography. We're going to create a single property website for you. And I'll show you what that looks like. We're going to send you market activity. So anytime a house that's similar to yours comes on the market, has a price reduction or goes under contract, we're going to let you know about it just so you can stay up to date with what's going on in the market. I say Friday call. So remember what I said at the very beginning, this is going to be a smooth process for you because we're going to keep you up to date. So you will for sure hear from us at least once a week and it might not be on a Friday, but certainly it'll be every week we'll do a virtual tour we'll also have an open house this is our main website and we get thousands of visitors every day just on this one website so we'll have your property featured here this is a sample of the single property websites that we do so we'll have we enhance the photos so sometimes i don't know if you guys have looked at a property and you see like a little thumbnail, we actually blow our pictures up and enhance them. And 
we have the school district ratings and information. We also have a complete property description. So this is where I input the one thing I picked out about the house that I liked. So let's just say there's two bedrooms on the first floor. So they are going to know that you have two master suites downstairs. So this is where I insert it here when I'm going through the marketing because they're going to be like, oh, they paid attention to that. You know, pick something that you can bring up because this is where we put the property details. So the whole point of this is we do a complete property description. And then we also integrate Google Maps into our sites. So for those international buyers that we market to or anybody who's not familiar with your area, they'll have a map view, a street view, and a bird's eye view. And this is why we do professional photography. So this is not one of our pictures. This one's not. <laughs> yeah. This one is, as you can see, ours is bright. The house is the focal point. It's centered. This one's not ours. This one is ours. This one's not. This one is. This one's not. This one is. This one's not. And for our properties that have acreage, we actually do drone photography. So this is one of our property pictures. And we always like to show this house. Um, this property was listed by another agent and it was during our seller's market, the boom time. And they did not sell it. They had it listed for six months. We took it over. We did not change the price. We did our marketing. Um, everything that I just showed you that we do, we did it on this property and sold it in two weeks. And this is a true story. And I'm going to show you the other agents' pictures and our photos so you can see the difference. So this is theirs. So the cool thing about you guys being part of the network is you get to use the same stories because we're all together in this. So this is our picture. This is theirs. This is ours. Theirs. Ours. Theirs. Ours. People always like think it's such a big difference with the yeah because when you have a professional photographer and they have a wide angle lens it's not that panel lens that looks cheap it's a wide angle lens so it's going to get the full um, room <laughs> and this is theirs yeah and this one's ours. So do you guys have any questions? This is what I say to the sellers. Do you guys have any questions about what I've shown you? Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> and they're usually like, no, I think you went over everything. Like you guys do a lot. And I'll say, are you guys comfortable and confident that we can get you the most the market will bear? And I kind of just wait for them to say it. And then if they say yes, then we'll move forward and talk about pricing. So I like to get them to sign before I go through the pricing. So you can say, so what we'll do, since you're comfortable, confident, you're ready to move forward with everything, we'll go ahead and get the paperwork signed and then we'll go through the pricing. And I allow my clients to participate in the pricing. Um, of course, I'm gonna guide them down the right direction, but I allow them, so we'll, we're going to come up with a price that you guys are comfortable with and that I feel the market will bear. And then we'll also work on, um, we'll discuss the commission as well. So I give them the seller's disclosure. And I, I always have a packet with me. I don't let people, I don't like anything to mm -hmm. disrupt me from getting everything signed. So I don't do electronic signatures because I've had people like older people be like, I can't read it. Mm -hmm. Or um, if there's a couple, it's like I, they didn't see that page and it prompted them to initial. I don't like any of that. So I always just go ahead and bring a hard copy with me. And I keep my whole pa um, package in my briefcase. So if you guys go to tier one, Um, let's see. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can type in tier one. Oh, when you when you log into your email, if you go on the side to the apps and then click on Drive. Um, you type on if you type in tier one. And then if you go under, they change this, I think it's under documents. Okay, so here's the buyer one. Oh, got to recast. So under tier one, you go into, let me go back to tier one. You go under um, documents and then buyers, and here's the buyer paperwork. So if you don't use dot loop, whatever you use, this has um, basically the paperwork that you're going to need. Um, anything we have pre-filled out on here. There's really not a whole bunch of like pre-filled out things except for on the buyer's rep. We have our transaction fee that's in there. So when you write up your contract um, for a buyer, you're going to have my name first and my license number, but your name is going to go after my name. So it'll be like Tierney Jordan slash Paula Bradley on that line and then my license number there. So this is our template, basically. On the buyer rep, right here is where we have, we just put in all the counties that we work. So if we missed one, you can add, like if it's a county that's not on there, just add that county in. Um, and then typically we do a, on the term, if their if their price range will allow them to do new construction, even if they haven't mentioned new construction, put in a year for the buyer's rep. Otherwise, like six months should be sufficient. But sometimes buyers end up wanting to build, and we know that it takes eight months minimum really to build. <laughs> and then on here, um, is where we have our transaction fee. So if you're wondering, like if you don't use dot loop, if you use dot loop, we can just add you to the loop that shows the ex, just share those exp forms with you. If not, if you use zip forms, just copy the information from these forms that are in tier one so that you can create your templates outside of dot loop. So that's the buyer stuff. Let me go back. Hopefully we have a folder for sellers. We don't. I wasn't the one who created these. Oh yeah, this is it. So on here, when they're filling out that seller's disclosure notice, so when we sit down and they're like, yes, I want to use you guys, I give them the seller's disclosure and I, I'm, I'm like, okay, which one of you guys wants to fill it out? You know, or if it's just one person. And I always bring like three pens with me. So I'll have like my packet in my briefcase. And I usually keep like three packets. And I keep three pens. And of course, I have my business cards. So when I walk in the door, I give them a business card and shake their hand. And I know what their name is. So I always look up before I go in what's their name so I can say, hi, Cherise, so whatever, you know, um, and give them a business card. But I'll have my listing packet. I'll take out the seller's disclosure with a pen, hand that to them. And while they're doing that, I'm going to be filling this out, my listing paperwork. 
So I pull up their property on my laptop um, in tax so I can get the legal description. I can get both of their names um, if there's two people. Um, so we have our template stuff filled in here. So you'll just fill in the seller's information. You'll fill in the legal description of the property. You're going to initial at the bottom. So I initial and then I put an X next to where they're going to initial. So as I'm filling out the paperwork, that's what I'm doing sitting there. Any exclusion? So when I get to this spot, I'm going to say, do you guys want to exclude anything? So exclusions are going to be anything that's affixed to the property, right, that they want to take. So like plantation shutters or custom drapery. Um, it's never bad to over exclude, you know. If they're like, I want to take my washer dryer, typically that doesn't like convey with the sale, but it's always, it's never a bad thing to over disclose, right? So if they say washer dryer, refrigerator, whatever, um, if there's something that they want to keep, then we just need to put it in there. Like a house that we have listed, they, they wanted to keep their ceiling fan. Now I always encourage people, if you're going to change out a fixture, unless you're going to just plate it, um, replace it with whatever you're going to replace it with so people can see what it's going to be before we put it on the market. Unless if it's something major, you know, like a huge, like I, we had one client who had a really large chandelier that was very expensive. So they were taking that, but it was difficult for them to take that down. So of course, um, we do uh, make sure you ask is the property in an HOA um, we'll, we'll talk about the price so I don't fill in the price typically right then um, I we do a minimum of a six month agreement now that the market's starting to shift we might end up going back to the year but right now six months and then once we get to pricing that's already filled in, but when I'm explaining it to them, when I go back and go through the listing paperwork, I'm going to say, for everything that I showed you that we do, we typically charge 9%. We'll do all of that for you for 7 and then I'll just circle the 7%. And they're grateful for that. Because most people charge 6% and they're just putting a sign in the yard and putting it in the MLS. We're actually doing everything that we showed on all of our properties. I explained to them that we don't earn our commission um, until we sell the property. And then I'll initial the bottom and, and check the spots where they have to sign. And this is our transaction fee. This will be paid at closing as well. And sometimes you'll have people say, oh, what, what is that? That's what we charge for the transaction, the paperwork piece. The marketing, the commission pieces for our marketing and everything else that I showed you. Protection period. So we do a 90 day protect, protection period. And this just means if we don't sell your house um, during the time that we have on this contract, which this has never happened to us. We've never had to exercise this, just so you know, but we have to go through it, right? Um, so we have 90 days after our contract terminates for somebody to come to you and say, hey, you know, we saw your property on the Tierney Jordan Networks marketing and we want to buy it. If you sell it to them, you'll owe us a commission. I thought I updated this. But this should say Dallas County because we're in Dallas County now. Um, so when you do your templates, because you're going to have to either, even if you have dot loop, you're going to have to create your own and put this in. So just put Dallas County there. We will um, put the property in MLS. And you're going to initial the bottom here and check off where they need to initial. We use centralized showing service, so let's talk about that. See, and I tell them it's also CSS. So if I'm in a meeting like like I am with you guys, I'm not going to answer my phone. So we have a service that we pay for to answer the calls for the other realtors. Um, they're going to call you to schedule the appointment. So um, their their name is CSS or centralized showing service. 
So let's talk about that internally for us. When you guys have a property that you want us to list, there is going to be, um, there's a listing input form that you fill out. And this is what it looks like. Oh, I gotta recast. So you're just gonna go in, and I need to have Tristan update the names on here, but you'll, um, it's a drop down. It's actually, I'm not looking at it the right way. Um, but you can actually even put it on your phone. You can get to it on your phone and just fill it out. So what's gonna happen, you'll fill out the listing input form and then you'll request photos from our photographer. So let me give you guys our photographer's information. Yeah, you can do it from your phone. Um, so you're going to, whenever you get a listing, you're going to do two things, three things. You're going to submit paperwork to our transaction coordinator, who is Latrice, Latrice Gatewood. Her email is contracts at tierneyjordan.com. Okay. You're going to fill out this new listing input form. Take note. So you know what to do because I want you to be able to do this too. New listing input form. And then you're going to shoot a text to our photographer and tell him when you want him to take pictures or you can call him. His name is Rod Jones. Let me give you Latrice's info first. Actually, I'm just going to put it in group. And can you add Latrice and Rod to our um, vendor list that's in tier one? Mm -hmm. Latrice Gatewood. Two one four 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 eight. Yes, Latrice. Two one four 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 eight. That's it. Three eight nine seven. Two one four 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 eight. Gatewood. And then Rod Jones is our photographer. Rod, R O D. And his direct number is 972 816 3947. So those are the three things you'll do. And what's gonna happen, once our marketing team gets your listing input form, and then the photos are gonna go directly to the marketing team. Those things are gonna cause them to input the listing into the MLS, okay? Um, the listing will go in under my name, but you guys will be listed as a co-listing agent, okay? And then what's gonna happen you're going to have to call CSS to set up all the showing instructions, okay? So um, I'm going to give you, let me pause this. So please do not adjust the thermostat. These are our sh uh, CSS instructions. Please do not adjust the thermostat. Please turn off all lights, secure all doors, and replace the key in the super box upon exiting. Thank you for showing. Please provide feedback if not submitting an offer. The other thing that you're going to do when you go in and you set up these showing instructions, you're going to set up for your seller to get a weekly seller report and that's just an option when you go into CSS to do the instructions there it's going to ask you do you want the seller to get a report so all you're going to need is the seller's email make sure you have that in there because you want to keep them up to date so when you call them once a week they should have gotten a report from you so you can pull up the report and you can go over that with them you never want to lose 
communication, even when it's not going the way you want it to go, even if you haven't had any show-ins, even if you haven't had any feedback, it's so critical <laughs> for you to stay in contact with them because they're going to, like, they might just be frustrated and blame you and think, well, you're not communicating with me, so you guys must not be doing your work, even though we are. We have a marketing team. That's all that they do for us. You know what I'm saying? So just make sure that you are doing um, that weekly call for sure. All right, let's go back to tier three. Yeah, you do right now. Once you guys get through your tests and everything, the Boomtown test, um, and we go through all this, you'll get access to tier two and three. Presentation. It's in tier three. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, if you um, if if the property's been listed before, you can just put it in there. Please use previous MLS, but you're gonna have to provide your own description. We can't use a previous description. So the only thing they'll really need is um, the description, the property description, if there's if it's been listed in MLS previously. So you can just leave everything blank and say, please use previous MLS, and then just provide your new description for it. Mm -hmm. No, meaning all the information about it they can get from the previous listing, and you don't have to type it all in that listing form. Yeah, if it's never been in MLS before. Yeah. All right, um, where are these packets? Um, documents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has every, it has everything. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me find. I think it's in tier one actually. Yeah, um, where did I find it? I'm trying to find where it was it under documents in tier one. Yeah. Oh, tier three. <laughs> listing input. No, but that's our listing paperwork, though. See, he did, Tristan's not a realtor. He's the one who put this together. Maybe it's... Uh -uh. So this is... I'm going to have to go in and organize this stuff. I had to look in... I have to put, uh, type under search, type Here it is. It's under miscellaneous. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Dallas. So when you create your own template, just put Dallas on there. And then here, this just sh this is what I tell them is we're gonna pay out of our seven percent. We are gonna pay the other realtor. I put two or more in here. You can put three or more because I never pay less than three percent, unless it's just like a like if I just leave room for like say you have an elderly couple, and they really we have to go down to a six percent for the numbers to make sense for them, you know, or say we have to go down to five for it to make sense. And we have to split that. You know, I would never do like three for us and two for the other agent. I would make it equal. You know what I mean? So in the rare case that we, somebody, and it's not like, oh, 
And I don't like saying this because I don't want people to think that we charge less. I'll tell you in the last, since I've been a realtor, I can count on one hand how many times I've reduced my commission. Just 100% honest. Because yeah. what happens is people think that's the first thing you're supposed to do. And it's like, no, we're not doing that. You know, we're in, this is the cost of our business and we've rendered services and this is the amount that's due. Just because you're short or your payoff was more than you thought it was, you got to figure it out, you know? So we don't reduce our commission because just to compete with somebody else, you know? Now that could change if our market starts shifting and we have to make some adjustments as a team, we'll decide how we're going to do that. But right now we charge 7% with a 525 transaction fee. Sometimes we charge a little bit more. So if you get a property that, I always say after the split, you need to make at least $1,000 minimum on a deal. So if you have a lower price point and you can't make at least 1,000, you need to charge a number to at least make $1,000. Because that was always my minimum. I'm like, I don't, I don't wanna work for less than $1,000 on a deal. You know, so I, we're willing to do everything for our clients. We're not going to treat a lower price point any differently than we do our million dollar listings or whatever. But at the same time, we might have to charge a little bit more. So you might have to charge 11% or 10% or 9% or 15% for the numbers to make sense. But of course, it's a smaller number because it's of, you know, 11% of 70,000 or whatever. But this, you just let them know that um, we're going to pay out of our commission that we collect, we're going to pay the other realtor. So you're not going to be responsible for paying us and then be pay another fee on top of that. Some people think that. They're like, oh, okay, so I, I pay you seven and then I pay them another three. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, intermediary just means, of course, um, that anyone who's part of our brokerage can represent the buyer. And then we're gonna market to all buyers except for owner financing buyers, unless they wanna do owner financing. Um, if the property, if you don't think the property will go VA or FHA, just cross it out and make sure you initial and your client initial, okay? Oh yeah, um, I think in that blue thing over there, I think so. Um, or you know what, Jade, there in my drawer, there's a little pouch. I forgot. It's black, a little black pouch and it's in there on here. Okay. I used to never ask about this until I ran into somebody who was like, um, I don't, um, like, I didn't know they had a bankruptcy. Like they didn't tell me. And because they, it was, they had gotten permission and they were thinking that, it was like they didn't need to tell me because it was all going to be resolved by the time we close. So make sure on this thing you ask, do you guys have any other liens on the property besides your mortgage? You know, have you filed bankruptcy? Um, if they have, you need to talk about that a little bit further and like write it down. You do, you do need to know the discharge date and you need to know if they have permission to sell it. This is all just standard verbiage. Now we've changed this to um, seven, so you can update that. And I just need to re-download the form. So what I'll do, I'll replace the forms so you have the most recent one. Cheer for seller and buyer. Um, this allows us to have a conversation about pricing before we even list it. So if there are, if we get consistent feedback and we can't change that, you know, we can't do anything other than change the price, we're going to have a conversation about that. If the house goes without any showings for two weeks, we're going to talk about a price reduction. Um, and I always tell people, we can't just reduce the price without their permission, but this is, we're letting you know what's going to happen, right? 
So that gives us an opportunity to discuss it. And then we always include the IABS and the seller's disclosure notice, but if you have, if the house was built before 78 um, and you need to get that lead-based paint addendum, then you'll include that. Um, if the property's in an HOA, you'll need to include that. Um, those are like the most common ones. Minerals, um, in the case that they own them and don't want to convey them, then yes. But I haven't had that too much. Did you try to tell them don't bother them? Yeah, I tell them. That's most right. of the That's time, right. okay, minerals were bought and sold before land was improved on. So most of the time people do not own the minerals on the property. If they want to find out who owns them, they can hire an attorney to do that. And it's a cost, you know. But most of the time, those minerals were bought and sold a long time ago. You know, most people don't own them. If they own them, then they would know about it. If it's worth anything, you know. On here, I just say this is just standard verbiage here. Um, and it just says this entire agreement is legally bound. You know, we're, it's legally binding. And then you can sign your name here um, on this portion and then just check off for them to sign and date on the other side. Here's the seller's disclosure. So they'll be filling this out while you're filling that out. Um, what do we know? Let's see what the date is on here. Now, this is just a template. Like, you're not even going to be using this one. You're going to pull the most recent one. I just have the forms to show what forms you're going to have to have and, like, what we pre-fill in. So you won't be using this one anyway. Where's the date, though? 9-1-17, yeah. Well, it, did they do one this year? So there might be a more updated one. Um, and then... When I have the lead-based paint, while I'm filling out the paperwork, okay, and they're filling out the seller's disclosure, I'm asking them this. So, let me ask you something. Are you aware of any lead-based paint or lead-based paint hazards on the property? Most of the time, they're going to say no, because if they, they haven't made lead-based paint since before 1978, so they're going to say no, so I'm going to check box B. And then I'm going to say, do you have any records pertaining to lead-based paint or lead-based paint hazards? And they're going to say no, so I check th that. So I include this along with the, the T47. So I'm going to tell them, so I take like a blank T47 with me, and you can get that. I think we have it in um, here, or you can get it from our title company. They'll give you a blank one. And I'll tell them that they can get that notarized, um, but... If they have an existing survey, the T47 is going to say, hey, we haven't made any structural changes to this property since this survey was done, right? So structural changes include, did they do an addition, right? Did they um, put, on a, put a pool on the property? Because anything that's going to affect, like, the boundaries or the easements, right, utility easements, anything like that, has to show up. Anything that they, even if they put a shed, but it say it has a, a slab under it, they need to come and do a resurvey. If they, when they bought the house, say there wasn't a fence, and then they put a fence in since they've got it, a new survey needs to be done, right? So the whole point of it is, is what they did running over any of the utilities or their property line. And that's going to show on the survey. So if they have an existing survey, we most likely can use it if they didn't make any changes. And that T47 is guaranteeing they hadn't made any changes. Okay? Right, since they bought it. So we include the lead-based paint, okay? Um, the T47 and the survey in the listing, other under other documents. 
Did I say seller's disclosure? In the seller's disclosure. Make sure you have that in there because you don't ever want to accept a contract that says they haven't received the seller's disclosure. You know why? They get a seven-day unrestricted right to terminate the contract with that. So don't get, don't fall for the old bait and switch. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. T47 survey, seller's disclosure, and lead-based paint. Now, if you have any bylaws from the HOA and there's an HOA, you can include that too. So that so is, is no on that one, the lead based paint is B and B. B and B. B, &B right? Yeah. So if it's unknown, they're going to know if they have lead based paint or not. They probably painted over it so many times since 19. Yeah. So if there ever was, like, it's probably gone. You know, um, this is what if, if you need, if you have somebody who is upside down, okay, so a short sell, here's our letter of authorization, and I've updated, this has the old address um, on here, but I've put the updated one in dot loop, so when I pull over the new forms, it'll be in there. That's it for that, okay. So we went through listing paperwork. We went through the process of putting in a new listing, right? Um, next thing is, let's look at, when, when we look at the buyer contract, it's gonna help us to know what we're gonna be looking for as a listing person. So I'll give it to you both sides, okay? Um, with a buyer, let's talk before we jump into the contract. Let's talk about um, what you do for your structure of a call. What is the structure of a call when you're calling a buyer? Because we went over the structure of a call for a seller, right? So buyers are coming on and they're going to our other website, which is Texas Online Home Search. So the only difference is Texas Online Home Value or Texas Online Home Search. So our marketing department is sending buyers to Texas Online Home Search, and this is what it looks like. We gotta go over pricing too, but we'll do that. Um, TexasOnlineHomeSearch.com. Oh, well, I'm going to put it in there. So when they come here, I can't see my thing all the way because I have this menu at the top. Okay, so this is our Texas online home search. So our marketing department is sending people here. So if they're looking in Allen, let's just say, um, and this property is what they're looking for, and they start clicking through to look at the pictures. It's gonna pop up for them to register, okay? And that's where their information is coming in on the back end. So when you go in and you're looking at into the um, buyer pipeline, so if you click, I'm looking at it from an administrative point of view, so I see everything. Um, but if I go in here, there's a little arrow right here, you guys, that will allow you to have an additional me menu. So if you click on this little arrow, it's going to pull up additional things that you can search by. So you can go in here. Um, 
let's just say you're in the buyer pipeline, which I'm assuming is that one. There's 25,000 total, um, but let's just see for So these are all like potentials right here. And it, there's 18,396 that are qualify, new, nurture, or watch. Okay. When you do your Boomtown training, you'll be able to see, like you can sort all of these columns, you can sort by, you can sort the data based on these columns. So if you wanna go in and say, Okay, I always sort by last visit, like two minutes ago, 14 minutes ago, one hour ago, right? Um, let's click on hot and see how many it adds. So that adds like another couple hundred for the hots. Um, but the other thing you can do, see this advanced lead filters? You click on that and you can go down and say, okay, let me see people that have not ever been called and click on that and let's just hope there's not a lot of those <laughs> so out of the 18,000 there's 322 you can go back to there and you can say I don't know maybe they didn't log it last visit you can sort by last visit you can sort by last communication um, you can sort by when they registered, time they registered. Um, you can sort by area as well. Um, okay. Okay. I hope all goes well. Okay. Um, you can go in here and let's see. Where is it that you can put the area? But there's a lot of different things that you can put in, but there's a there's a way. Maybe it's over here. Um I can't remember how to do it. But I thought there was a way you could sort by area. Oh, right here. Property or area. So say you wanted Arlington. It'll pull up the people. Now we still have this have not been called category. So if we take that out, there's 1300. So you can just go in and put different areas. Now we have a different dynamic. I don't even know where everybody lives, but if there's, if you see that there, um, once we get our system down and we're acclimated to everything, if we want to start marketing in different areas, we can do that. If you don't see a whole bunch of people like in certain areas that you really want to focus on, we can do that. So you just type in the area here on the side. If you're, let's say, with A3, it shows that there were three calls, but if an agent reaches out to her, does that does she then become that agent? So let's talk about the process, how it works. Okay, we manage everything from the seller pipe and the buyer pipeline. Okay, so as you're with our hot A's, you want to talk to them as needed. Hot A is somebody I'm sure you've shown a property to, so they would be pushed into your, your pipeline. And how you would do it, let's just click on here. You would um, transfer because everybody is going to be in, so you would transfer it to your pipeline. You would, your name would be under here, okay? Um, we only transfer when we set an appointment. 
because the whole point is it's not yours until you set an appointment. So we don't want to be irresponsible, forget about somebody, and now nobody else can see it, right? So, however, you talk. Let's just say you talk to Adrian, and this per, she doesn't have a to do. And the last time somebody talked to her was March 29th. Um, she hasn't really been on the site either, but it could be, we might be sending her stuff 150 or lower. There's hardly anything. So we might need to recall her and say, Hey, we just wanted to check on you. We know you were looking for a property. Um, just check in to see, did you ever find a property, you know, or whatever. Um, so in order to keep her as yours, even in the main pipeline, is all you have to do is have a to-do scheduled and it can't be past due. So if you go in and you pull up all the hots and say they're like, and say they're a hot B, so they haven't set an appointment yet and somebody hasn't caught, we just had that happen. And I'm like, I can't help it. So what happened is one of our agents had talked to a person, they were ready to go, they had to send their stuff to the lender, okay? She gave them to the lender and didn't follow up for a month. Another agent went in, called, and was like, they were like, yeah, we're ready to go, but nobody ever followed up to make sure they got the stuff to the lender. So the other agent was like, okay, get your stuff to the lender. We'll schedule an appointment tomorrow to go look at properties, but between now and tomorrow, you have to send all your stuff to the lender. They sent all their stuff to the lender based on that agent's instruction. Lender pre-approved them. So now they're the other agent's deal. You know what I'm saying? So there's no, it, it's a healthy competition because we're all business partners. So we're in our split that we have with each other. We're all invested in the system. So if other people aren't taking care of the leads, then like as business partners, it's great. There's enough for us to all eat. But at the same time, we have to be responsible with the leads, you know? So one of the other agents came to me and wanted me to take that lead back. And I'm like, I can't because we have rules and we're business partners. I'm not nobody's boss. I'm here to say we're running a business together, right? Because we're all investing in it. So the rule is you have to have a, a follow-up um, with hot B. You should have a follow-up every two weeks. There should be communication minimum. You can talk more. But at least, so if a whole month's gone by and they're a hot B and I see that, I can call that person. If your to-do is passed, I can call them. So you can't go in and just keep pushing out the to-do because I'm going to go look or, and you guys can go look, when was the last communication? Now, if you call them and they're like, oh yeah, I just went and looked at houses with Brandy yesterday, right? Um, and she just forgot to update it, then, then that's okay, you know, and you want to go into client care mode with that client and say, okay, yeah, we're just, I'm here in the client care department. We just wanted to make sure you've been taken care of. So you don't want it to make like we're all disconnected all over the place, right? You got, so to, no, to transfer it, you have to schedule an appointment, but you're going to be building your hot B and your nurture pipeline in this big pipeline. So to keep it as your hot bee and your nurture, you just have to stay up to date with them. So you have to have communication once every two weeks. That's not just you just left a voicemail. Like you have to talk to them. That's communication. Once every two weeks on a hot bee. Nurture once a month. Communication. So if you email them and they email you back, that's communication. If you log the call and say you talk to them, that's communication. If you send them a text from the system and they text you back, that's communication, okay? So monthly on nurtures, unless they're like over a year out, you can do it quarterly. Um, Bi-monthly on a hot B. Your hot A's are gonna be in your pipeline and it should be um, um, contacting them a minimum uh, of once a week on your hot A's. Okay. Okay. So you're going in and you're going to be lead prospecting from the main 
buyer pipeline and the seller pipeline. So let's talk about the structure of a call with a buyer. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna call them. And what you wanna do when you're prospecting on these leads, the first thing you wanna go in and see is see the last communication. See, now her credit score in November was a 470. Wants to purchase next year, wants Arlington 3-2. So if I see that, I'm gonna go look for a 3-2 in Arlington and call her with it and say, hey, just checking on you. I found a property in Arlington I thought you might like. Um, are you still thinking about purchasing a home? I'm not gonna go into the, hey, you registered on a website because they've been in our pipeline. Like Kim said, she just had an appointment with somebody who'd been in there for three years. There's gonna be people in there that we, we it might take them three years, but they might've been in our system three years and now they're ready when you talk to them. So just make sure you go in and look at the last communication so it doesn't sound disconnected when you call. For your brand new buyers, so the best thing to do on a follow-up call with a buyer is call with a property. For your brand new buyers, the, the call is, your intro is, hi, Joe. So we're not gonna say, can I speak to Joe? Is this Joe? It's just, hi, Joe, or hi, Sue, it, depending on if it's a male or female and whatever the name is. So we're gonna wait for them to confirm who they are. Like, hi, Adrian. And then she'll be like, yes. This is Tierney um, here with the Buyer Resource Center. You know, we said Seller Resource Center for a new person. Cause we just don't wanna scare people off and say we're a realtor off the jump. You know, with the Buyer Resource Center. Um, we just wanted to reach out and see if we could answer any questions for you or get to know your situation better. You registered on our website. So it's not salesy. Most of the time they're gonna be like, who, what? No, that wasn't me. No, I'm not interested. So your best objection handler for a buyer is, oh, okay, no worries. What's your current situation? Are you renting right now or do you own a home? That's the best objection handler for a buyer. Mm -hmm. uh, remember I said the best objection handler for a seller is how long have you been in your property? Buyer is, okay, what's your current situation? Are you renting right now or do you own a home? And they're gonna tell you, I'm renting or I own a home. So if they're renting, the next question is, okay, when's your lease up? And then if they say, whatever they say, so if they're on a month to month, um, you're gonna say one thing. If, they're, if their lease is up like, in more than three months, then you wanna to talk to them about the interest rates. Like we had that discussion yesterday. Interest rates are going to change what type of house you can buy. So if somebody's renting, it's probably because either credit or money. And it could be an ignorance of not knowing what your credit needs to be or not knowing that there are down payment assistance programs, you know? So we need to, we need to tackle that down. Like why are they, paying somebody else's mortgage. So you're renting, you're, you're paying a mortgage, you're just paying someone else's, you know? So do you know that the interest rates are really low and they're scheduled, they've been slowly going up? Are you aware of that? And I always throw little seeds like, you know, we have different programs where if you don't have all the money to put down, we have a lender that can help with that. We also have, if, if your credit's not that great, we've got a lender that can go down to a 500 because you need 10% down, but just throwing that seed. So you'd be like, oh, my score is better than that. You know, I have a 580. Well, we can help you, you know? So throw some little seeds to figure out that piece. If they need to, if they own a home, the next question is gonna be, okay, do you need to sell that property in order to buy something else? If so, we go into that whole structure of a call with the seller. How long have you been in the property? Go down that path, okay? So once you get past that initial, our um, acronyms are LP Mama for a buyer. And I always focus on the the middle three MAM first. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about location price. Well, let me tell you what they stand for. So location, price, mortgage, 
by Sergio. Agent. Motivation. And then appointment is the last one. Okay, I'm going to focus on the three middle ones. So asking them what their current situation is basically going to tell you their motivation, right? Then I'm, the question I'm going to ask about the mortgage is, okay, are you planning on using cash? I always say that because it makes people feel good and it's not an invasive question when you say, are you going to use cash or are you going to use a loan? Opposed to, are you going to use a loan? Doesn't it sound better? Like, oh, they think I can pay cash, you know? <laughs> And they'll be like, oh, no, I'm going to use a loan. So the next question on that is, what is their current credit score? Okay. Well, we've got a few in-house lenders that we've got great relationships with. They really take care of our clients. Um, what's your credit score? That way we can figure out which one's going to be the best one for you. And then they'll tell you. Um, if they don't know their score, which everybody knows their score, you know, let them know you need to know their score. So we can move forward. You know, it's not a big deal. If it's lower, we can get you there. You know, it might take us a couple months, but if you don't tell us, we're not going to know how to help you, right? So get their credit score. Find out if they're self-employed. That's another big one. Because if they're self-employed, we definitely need to get them with a lender before we do anything. So what's their credit score if they're going to use a loan and are they self-employed? Those are going to be the two big things. Um, and are they currently, are they currently employed? <laughs> um, the other A is, are they already working with an agent? Because I don't want to spend a 30-minute conversation about your dream home, and then you're like, my sister's a realtor, and I'm going to use her. Now I just spent all that time with you, right? So MAM, mortgage, motivation, agent first. And then once they pass those three, I'm going to go into location, price, and then go into setting the appointment. So the good thing that one of the agents did that I told you guys, she set the appointment and then she was like, I need you to get with the lender in the meantime. So that kind of puts a timeline for them to go look at houses, right? Um, so that's the buyer structure of a call. And what we do with buyers is we're going to create their category. So remember... If somebody's a nurture, that means they're like four or more months out. A hot B is going to be three months to like two weeks out or so. So a hot B is going to be like two weeks to three months away. Now these timelines are at your discretion. You might say, a hot B to me is three weeks, you know, like within that, or it might be one week. You might not want to be calling somebody every week, you know, who's two weeks out because they're, you know, waiting for their school or to populate this new thing that they just paid off, whatever, you know. So that's kind of at your discretion with that. You might not want, you might want to nurture, you might want to call somebody twice a month who's five months out. I'm going to say four, but it's up to you. Right. So I'm just kind of giving you a guideline to go off of. So hot A's, I would say anybody who's like two weeks or less ready, I'm going to be calling them at least once a week. That's your hot A. Your hot B is like two weeks to three months. And then your nurture is going to be three or more months out. The other category that you need to know your qualify, Q-U-L in here, when you categorize them as that, is that's because you've never spoken to them ever. You've called, it's a valid phone number, it's not disconnected, but we've never gotten them on the phone. Those are going to be your qualifies. So when you're doing your prospecting on new contacts, you should be hitting the news and the qualifies because those are people that we've never spoken to. Now, I'm not going to tell you that we've been perfect in updating the system correctly because I went in there the other day and I'm like, people aren't updating it, right? You're going to put your hot in here. Now, if you select hot, 
there's no distinction between A and B, so you have to add the tag to it, and you have to tag it as a hot B. I don't know what this B1, B2 is. Somebody did that. I don't know what that is that. But here's the deal. As you're really building your pipeline, when you distinguish between your Bs and your regular hots, you can go and you can search for all your hot Bs and put them just as long as it's tagged, okay? You can search for it. So when you come up on that time of the month, you might say on the second and fourth of every month, I'm on that week of the second and the week of the fourth, I'm going to call my hot Bs, right? So you go in and you pull up your people that are tagged with the hot B. And you put that on the B1, right? You could do B1, whatever. Let's update those tags. Okay, so qualify, and then here's the other one, watch. So watches are going to be people that we have a valid email for, but we don't have a valid phone number. So if we call the number, it's disconnected, or we call and they're like, no, that, that wasn't me, that's not my number, then we're going to make them a watch as long as we have a valid email, okay? And as what you're going to do with your watches, you're going to set up an automatic email to go out to them, okay? And anybody who's active, we've converted about 30% from that watch category as long as we set it up properly. Because sometimes people just don't want to talk to us in the very beginning, right? I just don't want to talk. They're browsing. They're thinking about it. They don't want to feel pressured. They don't want to waste your time. They just want to look. You know, so it's okay. I'll show you. Um, pending, of course, anybody that's under contract, make sure once they're closed, you mark them as closed. The other thing you want to do is if you talk to somebody, now this is going to be heart-wrenching, trust me, because it is for me. You're going to go in there and they're going to be like, oh, we just bought, we just closed yesterday. And you're going to be like, dang it. We just put our house in the market yesterday. You're going to be like, dang, you know. But remember, people buy and sell every five to seven years. So just mark them as closed because that's a place you can go future, you know. Um, you just click on it and then select it. So you just change the category sorry, right there. So you can just click on it and it'll change it, okay? Archive is anyone, and I have a little cheat sheet in the tiers, so I would suggest that you keep the cheat sheet, we'll find it together so we know where it is, but it tells you, keep that, just print it out, it's a one pager and it tells you what category it should be, okay? Um, archive is somebody that we have valid information for, but we're never going to, we don't think we'll ever close a deal. So if I talk to somebody, we have their right phone number and email. We let them use our site, but they're like, my mom's a realtor, and I'm going to use her. You know, something like that. Trash is bogus phone number and bogus email. We don't have any valid contact info. Now, don't just get discouraged by somebody's name, because we have closed a Santa Claus and a Mickey Mouse. Not saying that was their real name, but that's the name they put in. But they gave us their either their number or something, and we ended up closing them. So don't get distracted by the name. Okay. <laughs> all right. So when we talk to a buyer and a seller, we all, every lead has to have an e-alert. This is Boomtown's automatic email system. Okay. If you, if the person has been looking at properties, you can select the system e-alert. And what it's going to do, what was it giving me a, oh, they don't have enough information they're saying. Okay. So I always try to do system. So if somebody's been searching on our site, we can click system and it'll populate all the stuff that they've looked at into, it'll put the criteria in for us. Okay. Otherwise you go to blank e-alert. And you're going to put in 
the information. So if somebody tells me, oh, I want to be in 75052. Right, so this is pulling from MLS every 15 minutes. It's updating every 15 minutes. So if you talk to a buyer mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, I've been looking on Zillow. They're like, don't look on Zillow anymore. They don't have up-to-date information. I would hate for you to get excited about a property and then it's not available. Go on our website. Mm -hmm. Our website pulls every house in North Texas in and it's updated every 15 minutes, okay? Make sure when you select a zip code, you check it and add it. Because if you don't check and add, it's not going to populate it. Okay. Um, so this just gives you other things. Now, this doesn't have as many details as MLS does. So if you have somebody who is really Again, I just have to say, uh, she's keeping me in line with my food. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys need to eat something, drink, I, I'm just trying to make sure you have all this information so we can get you in the system. Yeah. So I know this is like boring stuff, but um, you use the system, it's going to return for you, for sure. Okay, so... Say they want a specific school district, you can do a school district, you can do a school, neighborhood. Now remember, this is not MLS, this is pulling from MLS. So you might have like, say it's Lake Ridge, right? There's a whole bunch of different Lake Ridges that pull up. So you can't just do the asterisk like in MLS, you can do that. So you're going to have to select all of them, but you're going to have to make sure there might be a Lake Ridge in Cedar Hill and there might be one in Frisco. So you might need to view the properties to make sure you have the right ones. And maybe you don't, um, thank you. Maybe you don't do subdivision. Maybe you don't do subdivision. Maybe you just end up doing the city or a zip code or you can do map too. Okay. So, not on here, but you can of course, in the MLS. Put your minimum bedrooms, bathrooms, year built. If they want acreage, square footage. Now, remember there's a minimum here. So say somebody's like, I do not want a two-story. You're going to go put one as your maximum. Okay? Then they have different little amenities that are common that you can put in here. So if somebody's like, I don't want an HOA, I want a community pool, um, I want my master down, they just have like common stuff. Oh, those are good though. Yeah, they're good ones. Now, somebody could be like, I want to see foreclosures, title status, HUD owned, you could do that. If they only have, say, FHA, you can click FHA, and it's going to pull from the proposed financing in MLS. If they're doing USDA, you can do that, too. I, I wouldn't really do keywords because it messes stuff up. Um, when you're setting up a buyer one, you're going to not check under contract. Okay, and then you're going to do here, homes in Arlington for sale, right? Um, we typically put, if it's our client, we'll put from the Tierney Jordan Network. If it's not somebody we talk to and we're just setting this up because we're going to set it up for everyone, we won't put from the Tierney Jordan Network. We'll just put homes for sale in Arlington, homes for sale in Grand Prairie. Okay. Um, if this is a nurture, we're going to change the frequency, right? We don't want them to get it daily. 
it might be monthly, twice a month, weekly, twice a week, just depending on what their timeline is, okay? So make sure you update that and you're going to save it. For sellers, what we're going to do for a seller, so your buyers are going to set up in here and then you're going to set them up in Matrix as well, but you're going to email yourself. So let me show you what that looks like. Just open a new page. Mm -hmm. Until they buy. And then I might change it and change it up to market activity so they can start seeing, like I'm going to switch it up. So, and I might send it to the monthly and say when we close, I might be like, hey, I'm going to just keep sending you market activity so you can watch what's going on because that's going to keep that relationship, right, going on between. So for buyers in here, and I'll show you why, because like those people that I told y'all, that one guy, he didn't even know about a property that came up. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> exactly. So what you're going to do, I don't know how this ended up on the down there. So you're going to go in and do search residential quick. And I like to do coming soon. Um, you can leave these in there as well because, of course, if there's an active contingent and you submit a better offer, that can be your client, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with kickout. Same thing with op active option. If they come out of the option, you would want to know about it so you can start watching those if they fit your client's criteria. So there's... Active kickout and active contingent are basically the same thing, except with a the contingency, they have the right, well, it depends whatever you agree to. There's a, a timeline in there that you put. So if the seller receives another offer while you have the contingency on, they can come to you and... Um, ask, say, hey, I'm going to either move forward with this offer or you need to waive your contingency. If you waive the contingency, there's typically an amount of money you can pay, there's an amount of money that you pay towards additional earnest money. Okay? Kick out, they can accept the other offer and they don't have to give you the right to waive the contingency. Okay? You do the kick out? So I will keep those because those are potentials for your buyers. So let's just say they want Arlington. And let's just say they want a, a foreclosure in Arlington. You guys know how to find the foreclosures? Single family. So you're going to go under, let's see, seller type, lender, REO. Let's see if there's any. There's six. There's six in Arlington. <laughs> yeah, so whatever field. When I tell you, Matrix has everything you can think of in there. If you don't see it, just go to add or remove. And these are all the addition. These are ones I don't even have on mine. Okay. You can look up everything. Everything that you can think of, you can look it up. Um, so once you get your criteria in, you're going to go click on results. <clears throat> and then you're going to save because we're creating our automatic email. I'm going to hit save and we're going to do a new auto email. Okay. We're going to create a new contra contact not contract, contact. Your contact is going to have your client's first and last name. So say it's Joe Smith. <laughs> okay, I can do it to you. 
what, what was your last name again? Okay. <laughs> and then, I mean, Rwanda. So I'm going to put my email in here, though. I'm just sending this to her. But if this was my client, I'm going to put my client's first and last name. So when I go and I look up my list, I can make sure I have all my hot that are in Boomtown in Matrix, right? So client's first and last name, but my email address, not my client's email. They're going to get the Boomtown. And then I'm going to save it. And then, remember, I'm going to be putting, hopefully I'll have 10 to 15 hot A's. So I'm going to be getting 10 to 15 emails, right? So I need to know which client it's for. So I'm going to do homes for Lawanda. So I'm, I'm going to say homes for Lawanda Grant. So my client's first and last name. So when I get that email, I know which client it's for, okay? Okay, and then you're gonna go to the bottom and you're gonna schedule these to go out ASAP, not daily, as soon as anything hits. You can show in reverse prospecting results, that's cool because if somebody reverse prospects and you forget to check your email for whatever reason, you'll at least ensure that they're gonna call you if they do that. And then you just save it, okay? So all your buyers should be in matrix, okay? The other thing, you can do the same thing for sellers. So your sellers, you can go in so that you're aware of what houses are coming on the market and stuff. This is what you can do. So for your seller, let's just pull up a seller in here. Oh, this is on. All right, so let's just say this person is the one I'm looking at. She doesn't have a valid email. So she's a, so whenever you have somebody who doesn't have a valid email, but you have a valid phone number, we haven't talked to them, they're qualified still. But we can't set up the email for them. Oh, she unsubscribed. So we do have a valid email. We just don't have her permission to email her anymore. So, what we'll do on this one, we can use this one. So when a seller comes in, she might own two properties. Oh, sorry, I'm not casting. So I was showing y'all, there's an X by her email and she unsubscribed to our email. So if I go down here, we had set up the e alert, but she had unsubscribed. She can unsubscribe from there and Matrix, right? Well, no, I didn't put her in Matrix. So I can see that she requested two different property evaluations. See that? 126 Elm Street and then 305 West Springdale Lane in Grand Prairie. So whenever you get a seller that registers, you always want to set up the e-alert for them as well in Boomtown. Because we might not talk to them, right? So I want to just start sending them market activity. That's what we call it, market activity. So with the e-alert, it looks like you're going to do a blank one again, just like you did the other one, and this is going to pop up. You want to send them properties in their zip code. You want to take out this, these numbers, the pricing, because the system will automatically try to put the pricing in there for you. But the system might be wrong. <clears throat> oh, the car is strong. Mm -mm. I make it. I cooked it on Sunday. Mm -hmm. 
We're not eating for pleasure, we're eating for fuel. <laughs> That's what I have to keep telling myself. <laughs> We're only eating for fuel here. This is not good. <laughs> yeah, so with sellers, you want to set up an automatic e-alert for them, but we call it market activity. So in addition to like with your buyers, you're setting up an email. So sometimes you might get somebody who's a buyer seller, okay? <clears throat> so at the top, see how this says BC? B oh. I gotta recast it, sorry. On the top, you can see this person has a B and a an S. So if they're, you can change it there. If they're a buyer and a seller, but this person is both. <clears throat> um, if they're a buyer seller, you're gonna have two different emails. One for the properties that they'd be interested in purchasing and then one for their market activity for their current house, okay? So when we set up the market activity, we're gonna go in, let me just pull up a seller here. We're gonna go in and look for a seller. Oh, this was the same lady, let me get, well, she had a Grand Prairie house, so we could do her but I can't just create the e-alert <clears throat> because she's, let me just go in and set one up because she's didn't allow us, she unsubscribed. Let's look at this person. All right, so he's a qualify. Now look, these are past due to do's. When you see this, this means they're open, like you can call them. <clears throat> Um, this is his address right here. He came in and if you want to see the evaluation we gave to them, you can click on that link and it'll show you what we told them. So he's got a small little like apartment, it looks like in Dallas. Okay. So if you ever want to just click and see that you can do it. The whole point is you're going to go in and you're going to set up market activity in here. So you're going to go, normally you would click do blank e-alert. And this is his address right here. So I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to open another window. I'm going to go to matrix. And I'm going to do search residential quick. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to realist tax. I always go to realist tax first because if it's one that never sold in the MLS, I don't want to have to do two searches. So I just go to real tax and then I'm going to put in, I copied his address. I'm just going to paste it in here, hit search. Okay, so this gives me the criteria. <clears throat> now this person's name is different from Kenneth Miles. It looks like somebody had a, an appointment with him. I don't know what happened, but we can go look at the description. <clears throat> so whenever we're setting up market activity, we're gonna go, we're gonna click zip code, and we're gonna do the zip code that he's in, 76017. Remember, you have to add it. Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting to do this. I wish it would just follow me. All right, so you're going to click on, um, you guys know how we got to the e-alert, right? The blank e-alert, and then it's going to come here. And for sellers, we're going to do zip code. So you're going to click zip code. Unless it's like 
uh, area that's gated or something and you just want that subdivision to show, then you can do neighborhood. Okay, but for the most part, you get it within a zip code, it's gonna be pretty specific, opposed to doing like Arlington. I'm doing this zip code in Arlington, okay? This property is a single family, so I'm gonna check off single family. Now the two parameters I'm gonna put in are gonna be size and age, all right? So size, I'm gonna go 25% of the square footage. So his square footage is 1624. And I'm, I just went back, I'm not going to keep casting my screen, but I just went back to the realist and saw that it's 1624. So I'm going to take 25% of that, which is 1624 times 0.25. That's 406 square feet. Okay. That's going to be my differential. So I'm going to subtract. 406 from the 1624, so that's like 1,200 square feet, right? So in here, I'm going to do a minimum square footage. I don't want anything smaller than 1,200 because it's just not going to be similar, okay? And then I'm going to add 406 to 1624, so that's going to put me a little bit over 2,000. So I'm going to, I want to see houses between 1,200 and 2,000 square feet. Now, this, his property was built in 1992. So when I'm trying to, to figure out, what is this? When I'm trying to figure out um, the years, like the properties that I'm going to search for that are similar, I'm going to take the year built. So remember, it was built in 1992. So I'm going to take 2018 minus 1992. The house is 26 years old. So the first thing you want to do is calculate the age. And then you're going to take the age and multiply that by 33%. All right, so 26 times 0.33 is 8.58. So nine years is what you can go out on the differential. Point three three, and that's going to give you the differential. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to start with five because nine is kind of so. What I'll do, I'll put in. So it's built in ninety two. You got it. Makes sense. No, you got to calculate the age first because that's a year built. Mm -hmm. Yeah, year built, because year built is always going to be what's going to show in matrix, so that's why you have to find out the age first. So I took 2018 minus 1992, and that's where I got the 26, I think it was, years. So once you find the age, you take that times 0.33. Yeah, and that gave me 8.58 as the differential. So I'm going to subtract... 8.58 and add 8.58. So if you say eight years prior to 1992, yeah, so it would go up to 2000 and go down to 70, 70, right? Oh, what am I doing? Why am I saying 70? 92, yeah, 84. So that gives the, is that, okay, so eight years. Does that make sense? So with Boomtown, it gives you, why is it not, let me check, I might have to recast. Do what? So <laughs> I'm going to start with five. And then, but I know if I can't find any, I can go out that far. So that's like your map. But of course you want to stay as close as possible, right? So if I go, I don't know why it's not showing what I'm doing on here. But let me see. So we said go down to, um, so it was built in 92. Um, see, Boomtown, it's tough because when you get, 
prior to, let me just try to open another window because it wasn't showing you guys what I was doing. So we went down 1200 and up to 2000 So on this year built, why is it not showing you guys what I'm doing? It's not populating it. That's weird. No, I have the, I have the year built. It's not showing it on the screen. I, was, I did that, but it's not doing it. So here's the deal. thousand like they start being they go down so from 2000 it goes to 95 and then from 90 it jumps 10 years so yeah the older one so we're gonna have to go down to 80 really you would go down that far but remember you're just sending market activity like you're saying these are houses that are similar to yours, that have sold. This is just to give them an idea of what's going on in the market. We don't want it to be that exact because we want them to call us anyway to come. You know what I'm saying? Question. So it was built in 92 and we're going to go up to, we'll just go up to uh, 2000. Yeah. So look, there's only eight properties that are showing that fit that criteria because it's that zip code within this parameter. So these are going to be similar houses, you know, and we're just wanting them to kind of see what's going on. We don't want it to be exact. And then we're going to go down now here for sellers. We're going to send them active. Oh, it jumped up to 24 and price reduce. So that's still not too much. 24. That's okay. <clears throat> so we're going to send them all categories. And then in here, we're going to go under the subject line. We're going to say market, real, sorry, real estate market activity for Arlington. And remember, we're going to have to be conscious of the frequency because we don't want people to opt out, right? 
So if it's our, if it's somebody we have their health listed, we don't want to be sending them stuff every day, maybe once a week, you know, so you can say, oh, I've been sending you that market activity or someone we've never talked to yet, like our qualifies, we might send it to them weekly as well. Or, you know, if they're a nurturer, we might send them this market activity monthly. So make sure you're conscious of the timeline because you don't want them to opt out of the email. So this thing you say weekly. Yeah, I would say weekly. Now, if this is a buyer, I'm going to do instantly. Well, that's not showing you guys my pop-up on here. because I would do instantly. Like mm -hmm. right now, when we've been in a low inventory market, I want people to know as soon as it hits. Right? So we're going to do this. We're going to save it so they get that automatic email from us. And then for our properties we have listed, I would set up an e I would go into matrix and do the same thing we did with the buyer. So I know when other houses that are similar to one I have listed sell, come on the market. So that can help when I call you every week to talk about what's going on. I can, or I can just call you and be like, like I get an email and I'm like, oh, a house just listed that's similar to theirs right across the street. Wouldn't it be helpful for them to hear from us? To be like, hey, I just wanted to let you know, and I sent you the email because you know it's coming from Boomtown, but Boomtown is at least 15 minutes delayed from when we get it because it has to pull it in, right? So just calling to say, hey, um, I just wanted to reach out because that house like two blocks over just came on the market. So just so you guys know, that's client care. So in here, if you go... And matrix and you look up see like Bobby's people aren't gonna get this training but he's there they'll get the training that we do Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday yeah Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday so if I go in and I'm say I just sold a house or I have a house <laughs> listed um, that's close to this house, right? So when I set up this email, go into myself, I'm gonna check coming soon and active. I'm also gonna select, I'm gonna keep these ones checked, pending, but I'm gonna do it, um, zero to one days and then sold I don't need sold in the last 90 days um, but zero to one and then I'm gonna click on results so if somebody so here's a coming soon one right so if I don't know where this is in comparison to the subject property. And you guys might know this, but you can just click on the address and it's gonna show you where it is. So let's just say the house we have listed, oh, I gotta recast. Oh, it's not doing that. It's not what, but you're gonna get the map, right? So let's just say the house we have listed is on sale. Here's, here's the house that just listed or is coming soon. I can just pull this up and be like, oh yeah, you don't know where Ginger Trail is. It's just one block over from you guys. So it just makes me sound more like I know the area, you know, but you just Okay, so that pretty much gives us the whole seller process, the whole buyer process. Uh huh. So pending is telling me in the last day what went pended or what sold because I don't need to see like what sold in the last 30 days you know 
So I want to save this. I'm going to set up an automatic thing just like I did with the buyer, right? So this is the criteria we selected. Um, we did, this is for our seller in the last day, what went pending and what sold. Make sure you check the coming soon. Make sure you check kick out option because that's just kind of telling you the activity so you can be in the know of what's going on. <clears throat> the other thing I mentioned, if you click on results and you click on the address, like say you see a property that's coming soon and you can't see it on here. It's And so it's going to show where that specific property is. So let's just say our house is on this trail. I'm going to be like, oh, it's just three blocks over from you, you know? So it's, it's like, oh, there's a house. It's getting ready to get listed. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up, you know? <laughs> Customer service, these are the type of things that we talk about. Be a special use case. You have to wake up all of this technology stuff. Because technology is cool, but it can't do this stuff, right? It's not going to be giving updates. It's not going to be able to like coming soon. It's not going to call the client and talk to them, right? So we have to do things that technology won't. The other thing I wanted to show you guys is if you're looking for a client, and some people don't know this, you can do search residential quick, and then you can be like, let me see what's coming soon, and you can do a map search, right? And let's just say somebody says, I want to be 30 minutes from my job. Um, you're going to click on this little, um, click on this here. Yeah. I'm like, what? I forgot what it was. And then um, I've been talking too long. I've clocked two hours right now. <laughs> We've been on this. All right. So you're going to put their location. So say they're going to start at wherever their house and they want to or their job you can put their driving address and their job address and then whatever time they have to be there it's going to populate all the properties that fit that criteria and then you can go back in and put your other criteria in so if you want properties within that search area that are under 500,000 that have at least three bedrooms to bath you can put all that stuff in so I just wanted to make sure because everybody doesn't know. Oh, really? That's good, though. Because it's during the week. Yeah. Not a Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got to go over two more things that are going to be critical for you guys. The multiple offer stuff, like how we write up our contracts, and then pricing. Do you guys need to take a quick break, or are you ready to dive into it? Everybody good? Okay. Now, when do we do the bean counter? Whenever you're ready. And Just to read. Offer this information and something. Else. It's part of this. Um. I'm going to show you a couple of other things in Boomtown. Let me show you that before we go into the pricing. Did you pass it? So you have to do at least a 94 to move on. Um, Armani can tell you. I don't know. It used to be a paper thing, and I'm like, we have to automate this. You know, so I don't even know how to do the automation piece. Okay, so in Boomtown, when you go in, if you talk to somebody, you can just log. Oh, I got to recast. When you talk to someone, you can just log the call from here. Click on Talk to Prospect and put your notes in. One of the things we do after we put our notes in, we're going to, we end it with our first name and the first initial of our last name. So everybody knows who, like if you're going in and you're talking to a client, you can be like, oh, you just talked to Paula yesterday. We just wanted to follow up, you know. 
you can create your next follow-up right in here. So you can be like, I need to call them back in two days. It's going to be a call. This is how you distinguish between who these to-dos are for. This is how you can be like, that's mine and it's not past due. Put your name in here. So this is yours. So you put your name in this description and then you can put whatever you want, like call and ask if they talk to their sister about selling, whatever the last conversation was, and then you save it, okay? So you're going to log the call. You can put, if you left a message, call attempt, no message, and what you're going to do, I always do this, like if I call, and you don't want to leave messages, okay? Because you're not going to, every time you call somebody, you're just going to be calling and trying to get people on the phone. And multiple people might call in the same day. So you can't leave. Uh-huh. Yep, don't leave a message. So if, and remember, double dial. So call, wait, and then call right back. Okay. If you get somebody and they're like, hello. Like I've had somebody be like, I was in church. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I was like, I tried to leave you a voicemail, but I didn't get your voicemail. So I was just calling back to leave you a message. But I had somebody say that. She's like, I was in church. And I'm like, because I double dialed her. So she stepped out. But it works. It gets people to answer, you know? Yeah. So whenever I double dial, I'll just do this like two times. And then I'll put Tierney J. And I'll save it. Okay? If you talk to somebody and they're like, don't ever call me again. I didn't reach for this. You just put opt out. And then if it's the wrong number, you put wrong number. But always make sure you put your initials so we know who did it. If you want to send an email, you can send an email from here. And of course, this is not popping. It's not casting the thing. Um, it's not casting the thing. So the email comes up. We have a whole bunch of messages. I just clicked on that little email box next to the call log. So you see all these templates we have. You can use any of these templates. You can adjust them, um, all that, okay? So you can go in there. You can um, add a copy, somebody to copy on it. Um, you can attach a file. You can insert a listing from the MLS directly in here too. So the system is going to send, when you create an automatic e-alert, it's going to send it within like an hour. If you want to send it to them right away, just insert a listing and just send them an email. Like if you're on the phone with them. You're sending them the, the e-alert, so they're going to start getting property information. So I wouldn't overload them with a whole bunch of stuff. We, a nurture, you got to have communication. You know what I'm saying? So call, and you can email if you want. The biggest thing, a lot of people get in here and they just start emailing and texting, and that's not where it's at. It's on the phone. Like, we make our money dialing. So you got to be comfortable just dial, dial, dial. A follow-up email to a nurture, somebody you've built rapport with, maybe. But you need to have communication, even with a nurture. Because if you're talking to them once a month and you don't, like you're just leaving them messages, they might not end up going with you. But if you're talking to them every time, like, hey, I wanted to, the, the, the voicemail you want to leave with a nurture, right, is going to be like, hey, I, I needed to fill you in on what's going on in the market. Give me a call back. Take a few seconds. Something like that that's going to make people call you back. A buyer. Hey, I found a property I need to tell you about. Give me a call. Don't leave the property on the voicemail. You need communication, right? So it's always like, what can I say that's going to make this person call me back? i got to be providing value, not, hey, I was just checking on you. I wanted to see how things are going. No, that's not going to get no call. Right? All right. You, we have text, too. Um, so, and we have template text. So if you click on here, there's different templates that you can use. 
and you'll have to sign up. It's going to make you opt in to a mobile number in here. And that mobile number is going to be the number that's going to text from the system for you. And it'll just populate. Like you'll be able to see text messages, whoever sent a text out and their responses. You can create, instead of going in and lo logging the call and creating a to-do there, you can actually set a to-do from in here. And this is where you, you're going to go in. Make sure you put your name in the details so it's assigned to you. And people are going to know because everybody is going to be working it from the same place. And then if you want to just add a note, like whatever, um, they're not selling until mm -hmm. the mother passes away. <laughs> I mean, I've had people say that. We're just, you know, once my mom passes, you know, it's part of life. So if you want to put something pertinent that you don't want people to have to scroll through the summary to know, you can put it right up here in the description. When you type anything in here, make sure you hit this little checkbox or else it's not going to save it. Okay. <clears throat> the other thing, when you scroll down here, there's going to be a summary of everything. So if you want to see more history, like you can just keep clicking on the show more history. It's going to go all the way down. So it shows you when they registered March 19th and then all the history. Whenever I go back in, I'm looking for like the talk to prospect logo or the email. Because I'm looking at like what the most recent communication was. That's what I'm looking for. The other thing is if somebody's like, I didn't get your emails. You know, we send that automatic email, right? You can go in here. Now, by default, the e-alert box is not checked. You see that? It's not. Because every if you send one every day, that's all that will populate in the summary. So if you want to go see when the last time, if they're like, I didn't get your email, you can click on that. Oh, I sent it to you um, on the 5th at like 1 o'clock, and you can see they didn't open it, right? And you can click on it and see what, it, what we sent him. We sent him two properties. So why wouldn't that already be checked if he's set up on e Because the system doesn't want to overpopulate the history. Because you're sending an e alert every day, so that's all you would see. Okay, so in order for us to see when we... Out yeah, just unch you just have to check it because it's not checked by default. Okay. Whenever you create complete a follow up, you want to check it off. Because if you don't check it off, remember, and it ends up being past due, somebody could call them. The system tells you you can add like their birthday, their closing date in any related account, like say a husband and wife end up both registering. So you can add their account. This is going to just give you a pie description of what they're looking at. So they're looking in the $200,000 range. They're looking at all single families, four bedrooms. It just gives you a quick analysis of what they're looking for. And then of course down here you can see recent property views um, and if they did a property valuation so it's all there I always pull up the the property that we're looking to do an evaluation on first because matrix doesn't allow you to work in two different windows at one time so whichever window is going to just be stagnant that's the one I look up so Hamilton okay Okay, so then we're going to create, open a new window and pull it up in matrix as well. Okay. Does it kick you out sometimes if you do two matrix windows? No? Oh, so we got to, okay. It would really be, I guess, where, meet at the house? Oh, okay. 